So today I want to talk about my experience in installing Linux on a Windows tablet. I got my Windows tablet to replace my iPad Pro, but obviously being that it's Windows, it's not exactly a touch-first experience. So I wanted to see how another operating system fares. Now I should say, this isn't my first brush installing Linux on a potato computer. Over the years, like many people, I've tried using Linux to breathe life into all sorts of decrepit, derelict computers running on slow hardware. Always, I'd see how great it is, especially compared to Windows, and then promptly switch back out of a fear of change. This time, though, I have a specific reason for trying out Linux, to see whether it's better on a touchscreen. The first steps were easy and straightforward. I downloaded the ISO and made a bootable USB drive using Rufus. I chose Fedora Workstation because I saw a Reddit post that recommended it. Actually booting into the ISO, however, proved to be a bit more difficult than I had anticipated. For reasons that continue to elude me, HP seems to have disabled easy access to the BIOS, meaning I had no way to change the boot order. So, a bit ineptly, I had to search UEFI in Windows and found the advanced startup options under System Recovery. From here, I could change the boot order directly from Windows. Of course, I first had to decide where I wanted to install Linux. My initial instinct was to create a partition, and I did briefly choose to do so, and found the option to install Fedora then and there. But even after clearing a few files and uninstalling a few array of programs, leaving my Windows installation mostly bereft, I could still only eke out around 20 gigabytes of space to allocate to Linux on my 128 gigabyte SSD. It actually meets the minimum requirements for Linux, but there would have been little space in reserve for either Windows or Fedora. Not ideal. I noticed, however, that the micro SD card that I use for media storage and that permanently resides in its tray appeared as an option. So, a bit recklessly, I decided to use a USB hub to plug in another flash drive and proceeded to create my Linux installation on a USB stick. To be clear, I would not recommend this. For the same reason that our vital organs are inside of the body, rather than outside. What struck me immediately was the interface. Swipe gestures worked with a fluidity that Windows couldn't dream to emulate, and the touch icons were all big and responsive. Even scrolling through the settings menu, for example, had toggles or a context menu, exactly as you might find on iOS or Android. For maybe the first time ever, my Windows tablet actually looked like a kind of tablet. Moreover, everything seemed to work correctly, the touchscreen worked fine, as did the Wi-Fi module and Bluetooth. Even the gyroscope seemed to work, flipping the device to the portrait orientation once it had registered the change. As far as I could see, only the webcam seemed to not function. Delving deeper, I saw there was an indication that there was no hardware detected. With the default scaling at 200%, everything looked large, but not ridiculously so. It should be said that the correct scaling factor for this device is likely around 150%, the default on Windows, but Fedora doesn't allow fractional scaling. Of course, it takes a quick Google search to find out that you can enable fractional scaling after a bit of tinkering. Having said all that, if I had dreams of unlocking the true potential of the Potato Pentium N6000 processor and vindicating the HP Tablet 11, they were quickly dashed. As far as I can tell, there was barely any difference in performance between the Windows installation and Fedora. Admittedly, the comparison is unfair, given that I was running Linux off a thumb drive. Nevertheless, I noticed a pronounced difference across the various power profiles, suggesting that the drive was not a substantial bottleneck. On the balanced profile, I saw a performance roughly comparable to what I get on the battery saver mode on Windows. And with the equivalent power profile enabled on Linux, performance tanked. It was strangely reassuring, but unbearably slow. As it turns out, it seems Windows knows what it's doing when it comes to making an OS. So after all that, did I decide to make good on my intuition to abandon Windows forever and ever? No. If my tablet were more of a secondary machine, I could easily see myself removing Windows entirely and installing Linux on the boot drive. But my dislike of Windows isn't sufficiently strong to sustain such an endeavor. It may not be a fashionable view, but I think Windows is just fine. It's not perfect, nor is it particularly suited to the HP. 
but in the universe of available options, it's the least worst. Nevertheless, it wasn't difficult to see the value in a Linux installation in the tablet format. Somehow in this operating system that shares a name with a kind of hat, there seems to exist an operating system that bridges the divide between a mobile device and a true desktop environment more ably than I have ever previously encountered. It's not without its occasional shortcomings, endemic to any community-based open-source effort, but the ideas are really sound. In fact, I find it slightly baffling that there aren't more native implementations of Linux on tablets. After all, this is the basis of Android, however loosely. Touch gestures, even when I didn't know what I was doing as I was still exploring the device, were infinitely more fluid than anything on Windows. And all the while, remember, it remained a true Linux computer, with none of the restrictions one would find on Android or iOS. So, there we are. Actually, to tell the truth, I recently sold my HP tablet and replaced it with a boring laptop. That wasn't out of dislike for the Windows tablet, but my circumstances changed. Still, if you're on the fence between an iPad or another Android tablet and are considering a Windows tablet instead, remember that there's also this third option of dual booting Linux and Windows on your Windows tablet. You might be surprised by how good the experience is. Anyway, take care, and thanks again for listening.